myself dr krishnamurthy working as assistant professor in the department of chemistry jss art science and commerce college gokak which is affiliated to rani chennamma university bidagavi today we will uh, learn about the semi micro qualitative analysis of inorganic binary mixture so this comes under bsc fourth semester chemistry practicals so today we will learn so what is chemistry behind this semi micro qualitative analysis so as we know analysis nothing but determine or find out the components which is present in the given mixture so in this broadly classified into two types one is a qualitative analysis another one is quantitative analysis qualitative analysis nothing but what is present or which component is present in the given mixture in inorganic semi micro qualitative analysis uh, find out the individual components present in the salt mixture quantitative analysis nothing but the amount of the component present the mass of the some uh, components present in the given mixture that is quantitative analysis here we have studied qualitative analysis semi micro nothing but the amount of uh, the compo the amount of sample which is taken for doing the test in macro method we taken uh, some grams one or one gram two grams in semi micro we have taken 20 mg to 40 mg another one is micro method we take uh, some 5 grams to 10 grams 5 mg to 10 mg in ultra micro method we can take uh, less than 1 mg that is macro method semi micro method micro method ultra micro method so we are here we are taking semi micro method a pinch of uh, substance or salt mixture is taken for doing the test that is semi micro qualitative analysis of inorganic binary mixture binary mixture nothing but inorganic salt containing two acid radicals and two basic radicals that means two negative radicals that is anions and two positive radicals that is cations that we have to find out that is called binary mixture so as we know that is simple salt double salt and complex salt simple salt nothing but the salt containing one acid radical and one basic radical one anion and one cation for example sodium chloride calcium carbonate zinc sulfate aluminum sulfate potassium bromide etc etc and double salt nothing but it contains two acid radical and two basic radical for example uh, that is well known example more salt that is ferrous ammonium sulfate so this salt involves ferrous sulfate and also ammonium sulfate there are two basic radicals that is ferrous ion and ammonium and sulfate is the acid radical that is called double salt one more salt complex salt simple salt double salt complex salt complex salt nothing but coordination compound that is the electron deficient species that is metal is surrounded by a electron rich species that is ligand which donate a pair of electrons to the metal to form a coordinate bond that is complex compound so we have here we have taken binary mixture nothing but two acid radicals and two basic radicals we have to find out so this systematic procedure analysis involves majorly three steps one is preliminary test second one is detection of acid radicals or negative radicals third one is detection of basic radicals or positive radicals cations so let us discuss one by one in detection of acid radicals there are two three groups in acid radicals group 1 acid radicals group 2 acid radicals and group 3 acid radicals in group 1 acid radicals the group reagent is dilute sulfuric acid so what are the radicals carbonate sulfide etc in group 2 acid radicals the group reagent is concentrated sulfuric acid in this group the acid radicals are chloride bromide iodide and nitrate etc and third group acid radicals in this there is no specific group reagent so you have to follow a particular uh, test so in this uh, borate sulfate phosphate these are the acid acid radicals comes under group 3 
so in group 1 acid radicals carbonate and sulfide so what happened so what is the chemical reaction what chemical reaction is going on so here we have taken s for carbonate s for carbonate in this carbonate containing salt calcium carbonate it will be calcium carbonate or sodium carbonate potassium carbonate anything so carbonate containing salt it is react with dilute sulfuric acid so when we add dilute sulfuric acid to carbonate containing salt mixture what happen carbon dioxide is liberated a brisk effervescence of carbon dioxide is liberated so that indicates the presence of carbonate then pause this carbon carbon dioxide to lime water lime water nothing but calcium hydroxide so pause the carbon dioxide gas to lime water then lime water turns milky so we observe a milky appearance that is conversion of calcium hydroxide in to calcium carbonate so the milky appearance is confirms the presence of carbonate this is the test for carbonate so what happen the mixture is treated with dilute sulfuric acid a brisk effervescence of gas is evolved that is due to liberation of carbon dioxide so pass the carbon dioxide to lime water that is taken in gas absorption tube so what happen lime water comes milky before the lime water colorless when we pass the carbon dioxide to lime water lime water it milky appears that confirms carbonate so next the test for sulfide so it is also comes under the first group acid radical so sulfide containing the salt that is sodium sulfide which is treated with dilute sulfuric acid so what happens h3s gas is liberated so when we add dilute sulfuric acid to the salt mixture so we observe a colorless gas with rotten like smell that is unpleasant unpleasant smell that is due to liberation of h3s gas so this h3s gas is exposed to the lead acetate paper the, then it convert into a black precipitate that is lead sulfide so this confirms sulfide so sulfide salt is treated with dilute sulfuric acid what happen a colorless gas with rotten like smell h3s gas is liberated then h3s is exposed to lead acetate it is treated with lead acetate we observe a black precipitate that is due to lead sulfide that confirms sulfide acid radical present in the mixture so next second basic second second acid radicals so in this group reagent concentrated sulfuric acid so what are the acid radicals we have uh, learned chloride bromide iodide nitrate so let me know about the test for chloride so chloride containing salt that is sodium chloride or potassium chloride calcium chloride anything chloride containing salt is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid so when we take a dry test tube and salt mixture add concentrated sulfuric acid one or two drops what happen hcl gas is liberated that is colorless gas is evolved with colorless gas is evolved then a glass rod between ammonium hydroxide is exposed so what happen a dense fumes is observed so when we uh, dip the glass rod in ammonium hydroxide is exposed to the mouth of the test tube we observe a white fumes that means the liberated gas hcl is combined with the surrounding moisture it gives a dense fumes so that indicates the presence of chloride so next one more test is silver nitrate test silver nitrate test in this we have taken uh, chloride containing salt so in this we have taken a sodium carbonate extract for the confirmatory test so chloride containing salt it is treated with silver nitrate what happened we observe a curdy white precipitate curdy white precipitate so silver nitrate is added to chloride containing salt we observe a precipitate that is curdy white precipitate 
and this precipitate is treated with ammonium hydroxide when we add ammonium hydroxide the precipitate is dissolved this is soluble complex that is diamine silver chloride so when we add ammonium hydroxide the curdy white precipitate dissolves that indicates chloride so the silver nitrate test next is confirmatory test for chloride this is very important confirmatory test for chloride is chromyl chloride test so in this what happen chloride containing salt and potassium dichromate is taken in dry test tube then add two to three drops of concentrated sulfuric acid so what happen uh, orange red papers is award so when we take a dry test tube salt mixture potassium dichromate and add two to three drops of concentrated sulfuric acid orange red papers award that is due to liberation of uh, chromyl chloride gas that is CrO2 Cl chromyl chloride gas is liberated that is in orange red color so these vapors are collected in another test tube then add sodium hydroxide so what happens we get a yellow colored solution that is due to sodium chromate yellow colored solution for this we have add acetic acid followed by lead acetate when we add a drop of lead acetate we observe a yellow precipitate that is yellow or lead chromate so yellow precipitate appears that confirms chloride so this is chromyl chloride test salt mixture plus potassium dichromate add concentrated sulfuric acid orange red vapor is evolved due to the liberation of chromyl chloride gas that is crO2 Cl then collect the gas to another test tube and add sodium hydroxide we observe a yellow solution to this yellow solution add acetic acid followed by lead acetate then we get a yellow precipitate that confirms chloride so this is the uh, test for chloride so next we study about bromide test for bromide so bromide containing salt that is sodium bromide is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid so what happens hpr gas is liberated hpr gas is liberated uh, we observe a reddish brown gas that is due to liberated liberation of uh, bromine gas so when we take salt mixture in a dry test tube and add concentrated sulfuric acid we observe a reddish brown gas that indicates the presence of bromine radical so another test is silver nitrate test so sodium bromide is treated with silver nitrate so what we get a pale yellow precipitate of silver bromide pale yellow precipitate of silver bromide that indicates uh, bromide and this pale yellow precipitate when we add ammonium hydroxide it is dissolved soluble complex that is diamine silver bromide it is a soluble complex so that indicates the presence of bromide so bromide is the bromide salt is treated with silver nitrate it, it gives pale yellow precipitate this pale yellow precipitate is soluble when adding ammonium hydroxide that indicates the presence of bromide in the mixture now confirmatory test for bromide ct for bromide is globule test or chlorine water test that is a confirmatory test for bromide so what is the test bromide containing salt which is uh, add excess of chlorine water so take salt mixture in a test tube and add excess of chlorine then chloroform so bromine is liberated so chloroform is added it's so organic compound so chloroform or we can take uh, ccl4 carbon tetrachloride so salt mixture excess of chlorine water then chloroform then shake well the solution so then we observe the orange brown colored globule orange brown colored globule that indicates the presence of bromide so when we shake the solution we observe a orange red globule so that confirms a uh, bromide or organic layer is colored in some sort they mention organic layer is colored here what, what happened halogen exchange reaction so bromide is exchanged by 
or chloride halogen exchange reaction takes place by this way we can confirm the presence of uh, bromide in the uh, given mixture so next is uh, test for nitrate so nitrate containing uh, salt is uh, treated with constant sulfuric acid so when we take a dry test tube and uh, salt mixture a pinch of salt mixture add uh, two to three drops of constant sulfuric acid a brown fumes on warming in cold condition there is no brown fumes when we heat we observe a brown fumes due to the liberation of uh, nitrogen dioxide that indicates the presence of uh, nitrate acid radical so conformity test for nitrate that, that is uh, brown ring test is very important ct for nitrate is brown ring test so that means so make sure solution is taken in the test tube then freshly prepared paracelphate solution is added then add concentrated sulfuric acid drop wise along the sides of the test tube then we observe a brown ring is formed with a two liquid junction so brown ring is formed with two liquid junction that confirms the nitrate so nitrate is present in the given uh, mixture that is the brown ring test so once again a mixture then add freshly prepared paracelphate solution then add concentrated sulfuric acid drop wise along the sides of the test tube then we observe a brown ring is formed with the two liquid junction that confirms the presence of nitrate so this is a very loosely bonded loosely bonded complex that is a nitroso ferrosulfate complex so brown ring is formed due to the formation of complex that is nitroso ferrosulfate so this is the reaction regarding the brown ring test that is the ct for nitrate so next test for sulfate sulfate containing salt is treated with barium chloride or barium nitrate it's a barium nitrate test or barium chloride so solution is taken sulfate containing solution then we add barium chloride we observe a white precipitate barium sulfate is formed white precipitate indicates the presence of sulfate and it is soluble in hot ammonium acetate so white precipitate appears which is insoluble in dilute hcl even on boiling that is one point and it is soluble in hot ammonium acetate second point these two confirms the presence of sulfate so one is sulfate containing salt is treated with barium chloride white precipitate appears that indicates sulfate this white ppt insoluble in dilute hcl even on boiling one point and this white ppt is soluble in hot ammonium acetate that confirms the presence of sulfate so next uh, test for ammonium this is a basic radical nh4 plus basic radical test for ammonium so that is also very simple so make sure plus sodium hydroxide and warm so we observe the smell smell of ammonia and the glass that dipped in concentrated hcl is exposed we observe a white fumes that indicates ammonia next ct for ammonia that is nesler's reagent test there is the complex nesler's reagent that is potassium tetra iodo mercurate that is the composition of nesler's reagent so what happen uh, make sure plus add nesler's reagent then we observe a brown precipitate that is amino iodo mercury so we observe a precipitate brown colored precipitate uh, observe appears that confirms ammonia so mixture plus nesler's reagent brown ppt appears that confirms ammonia so finally the test for iodide also. iodide so iodide containing salt which is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid so what happened uh, gas is liberated 
gas is liberated hydrogen iodide here concentrated sulfuric acid acts as an oxidizing agent so iodide containing salt then we add concentrated sulfuric acid we observe a violet colored vapors on warming violet colored fumes on warming so here concentrated sulfuric acid acts as an oxidizing agent it oxidizes iodide to iodine here potassium uh, hydrogen iodide oxidation state of iodine is uh, minus 1 here iodine is zero iodide to iodine minus 1 to 0 that is so concentrated sulfuric acid oxidizing agent it oxidizes iodide to iodine and itself reduces to sulfur dioxide so here sulfur oxidation state is plus 6 here plus 4 so decrease the oxidation number so sulfuric acid undergoes reduction hydrogen iodide undergoes oxidation so we observe a violet vapors on warming that indicates the presence of iodide then silver nitrate test so iodide containing salt is treated with uh, silver nitrate what happened yellow precipitate appears silver iodide so we observe yellow precipitate which is insoluble in ammonium hydroxide that indicates uh, what iodide in the mixture next the cd for iodide confirmatory test for iodide so iodide containing salt then add excess of chlorine it is very similar to glogol test in case of bromide so iodide salt then add excess of chlorine then chloroform that is organic compound so we have taken chloroform or ccl4 in this case then we observe a violet colored globule violet color globule that confirms the presence of iodide in the mixture so this is about uh, the identification or the analysis of acid radicals in the given mixture so one more information here for the confirmatory test for acid radicals we have to prepare a sodium extract sodium extract sodium carbonate extract sorry we have prepared sodium carbonate extract that is sce for the confirmatory test after completion of preliminary test we have to prepare sodium carbonate extract for the confirmatory test for uh, acid radicals so why we have prepared sodium carbonate extract for or what is the importance for doing the sodium carbonate extract that is in a binary mixture as you know two acid radicals and two basic radicals so to bifurcate basic radicals from acid radicals because these basic radicals are interfere for the test for acid radicals therefore we can uh, bifurcate the basic radicals from the acid radicals we have to prepare sodium carbonate extracts so what is the chemistry going on sodium is cation and carbonate is anion so sodium combined with the acid radicals and carbonate is combined with basic radicals so sodium containing acid radicals are dissolved in soluble in water and carbonate combining basic radicals are insoluble so when we take a salt mixture and sodium carbonate in a, in a small particle flask one spatula of salt mixture and double two spatula of sodium carbonate in a small particle flask and add 10 ml of distilled water then boil the mixture boil the mixture up to the 10 ml is reduced to 5 ml then we observe a turbid the solution turbid solution that is sodium containing acid radicals are soluble and carbonate containing basic radicals are insoluble now the solution is cool and sent to fuse so after centrifugation we get a two part one is solid part another one is a liquid part the solid part is called a residue and the liquid part clear solution is called a uh, centrifugate so in this uh, stage we consider the centrifugate is sodium carbonate extract 
So by using sodium uh, carbonate extract, SSCE, we can uh, test, confirmatory test for acid radicals. Uh, then we get a exact a fine results for the acid radicals. By this way, we can analyze acid radicals present in the given sort mixture. Thank you.